Cheltenham and here we are again for our third instalment of our Cheltenham anti-post chats and selections with the bookies foe. How are you this evening? Hiya Penn, how are you? Not too bad, a bit of a cough. Oh. Um, I've had many antigen tests so mm -hmm. it's not COVID uh, but <clears throat> a little bit delicate on the old uh, vocal cords but oh, I'm not too bad, thank you. Good, yeah. good. So we're going to have a look at the champion chase this evening. Yeah. And as I promised, I said I'd do a little bit of homework and find a few things out that uh, maybe I need sort of some guidance on and questions. So um, this is what I was looking at. It's quite interesting to see that past 14 winners have been rated 157 or more. And out of those 14, nine were rated 167 or higher. Three horses in the last 14 years have won twice and nine of the last 15 winners were trained by either Nicky Henderson or Paul Nichols. So, as you know, if I go and find stuff out and got some information, that's only going to lead to one thing. Questions. So, mm -hmm. are you ready for some questions? <coughs> yep. Good. Firstly, um, I, I just kind of wanted to understand a bit more about the ratings and how that works and how that would probably, or should, influence how I make my selections. Okay, so every time a horse runs, the handicapper will assess that performance and then he will apply a rating to the horse based on that performance. Um, and uh, in a handicap, that will determine the next, what in his next race, it will determine what type of weight he carries uh, in his next race. Uh, but in graded races, they all carry the same weight. Um, and the champion chase is obviously a grade one. So, for example, if, if two horses are running off the same weight and one is one A beats B by four lengths, um, if they both run against each other again in a handicap the next day, well, then A will carry four pound more than B in the next race um, to sort of, it, you know, it's to make it more competitive. Yeah. Um. But that that's the way it's it's sort of judged. But as I said, from from grade three or even listed, I think from grade from listed all the way to grade one, they they sort of carry the same weight listed. I might be wrong, but grade three to grade one, unless they're handicaps, if they're proper, just graded races, they they tend to carry the same weight. Um. But again, you know, they're still assessed. You know, so if if a horse wins a grade one, it will be assessed and given a mark and. With the champion chase, it's it it always. <clears throat> I think you'll find it, it it always pays to to follow the the highest rated horse. Um, yeah. you know, as long as they can handle Cheltenham, um, you can't go far wrong then. Okay. But um, well, that yeah. sort of leads to my next question, which was um when we were discussing the Gold Cup and we were looking at how very few horses race that more than once and um you know very few would win it more than once um looking at this one how there are maybe some more horses that have won more than uh, the you know one time they've done it so far and i was thinking about how you said that maybe that's through maybe racing lightly uh leading up to cheltenham or is there anything different about that particular course that, you know, makes it more accessible for horses that have run it before? Well, I, th I think it's quite simple. I mean, the Gold Cup is three miles too. The Champion Chase is two miles. And um, two miles is a lot less than three mile too. Yeah. Um, the Gold Cup is the biggest jumps race in the world, uh, arguably, but I don't care what anyone says. It's, that's, that's the one you want to win. And they literally go massive pace from start to finish um over three mile two and that can really as i said in the gold cup um chat that it can it can destroy a horse like you know mm -hmm. um whereas the champion chase is only two miles it's a bit of a speed race um and it's it's less miles on the clock when a horse starts getting older they've less miles on the clock you know yeah, well. so they they can tend to perform at a higher level for longer, and uh, you know the result of it is you can have ten and eleven year olds winning a champion chase, but whereas it's very rare you get a gold cup winner in nine, uh, ten years and beyond, you know. So 
So again, it, like, again, this is my opinion. I'm not saying this is gospel, but I just think it's less miles on the clock. Yeah. Um, and that, that allows a horse then to have a bit of a longer sort mm. of career, you know? So. Right. so you could consider older horses where you might not in other races. Yeah, yeah. I mean, plenty of 10-year-olds have won the, 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 the champion chase. Just looking at it there, over the last 20 years, um, we have had an 11-year-old winner, Moscow Flyer, in 2005. Um, in 2016, Sprinter Sacra won it as a 10-year-old. And in 2017, Special Tiara won it as a 10-year-old. Uh, plenty of nine-year-olds have won the champion chase. And um, the only five-year-old to win it over the last 20 years was Masterminded. And that was a ridiculous performance because a five-year-old would even struggle in an article, which is the novice version of the champion chase. But Masterminded won it as a five-year-old. That was probably the most ridiculous national comp performance I've ever seen in my life. Wow. He absolutely destroyed them that day. And uh, I don't think ever, that will ever be emulated. Mm. If I look back, he won it in 2008 as a five-year-old. I'm not sure a five-year-old has ever won the champion chase. Wow. I'm going back. No, but I, I feel that that performance may, like Masterminded deteriorated very quickly as a young horse. And I, I just feel like long run in the goal he ran in the RSA as a five-year-old, I think. And um, I think if you, if you over... If you overexert these horses at a younger age, they just will go out like a light as they get older. So, yeah. I th <coughs> excuse me. I think it's important to really important to campaign these horses with the horses' health and well-being in mind. Um, and I think I think as time goes on and people get more knowledgeable about stuff and the science of everything, I think um, I think we're more conservative as to how we, we campaign and target these yeah. horses. Well, that's um, so definitely. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you for answering Penny's questions. <laughs> You're welcome, Penny. Thank you. So here are your selections for this race then. Talk me through them. <clears throat> okay, so we can have a look. I, I do apologise for the intermittent coughing, but I've had this niggly cough now for quite a while. And as I've confirmed to you, it's not COVID. Um, so we, we look at the race here and um, we have Shishkin is the very short price favourite. And let's be honest, if he turns up on the day well and healthy and then Nicky's in good form, he wins this. Okay. I've, he's been, he absolutely destroyed them in the Supreme. He did the same in the Arkle, and I have no reason to suggest he won't do anything similar here. Energamine is a very lofty reputation for Willie Mullins at five to one. And again, people think he'll give him a hell of a race, and and he may well do. But look, they're, they're both short enough at this point. And like we said at the start of this little um this little adventure we've started pen is, is to give punters is to give punters value big prices we're taking a big risk back in horses this far out so we're going to give people prices we're going to give people big prices and um i'm going to look now at the market so the, the front two are short enough shack and persuade is six to one that horse does not like the hill at Cheltenham. He wants a flat track. He wins around Leopardstown. Um, <clears throat> courses like that, but he doesn't hit the line hard. The hill's not for him. Six to one's a ridiculous price. He's getting older now as well. He's he's um he's not for me at all. Nuba Negra was very impressive last week at Cheltenham, won the Schlur. And um seven to one, <laughs> excuse me, is a decent price, but you know, when you look, you know, I'm not a massive fan of the jockey. Um, he, he definitely wants good ground, you know. So we're at this far out, we're asking for good ground. And at seven to one, it's not a great price. If it comes up soft, I know he won at Kenton that day very well on soft ground, but I'm convinced he's better on good ground. And I just don't think that's a great price this far out. Mm. Alaho will run in the Ryanair and should win it. Grenatine, I don't think, is good enough to win a champion chase. Uh, I know your stat there, Nicky Henderson and Paul Nichols have won the last 
they have a huge stranglehold on this race, haven't they, between the two of them? But I, I, I just think Grenatine's not good enough. Um, I think you'll find at least two or three better than him. Mm-hmm. Envoy Allen won't run in the race. Uh, so the next in the market is put the kettle on at 20 to 1. Okay, mm-hmm. so she she won the race last year. And um, I, I love, what I do love is when a horse puts in a below par, a below par performance and then the punters and the bookies over overreact on it. And um, that's going to be our first selection, put the kettle on. Um, 20 to 1 is a mad price. And you think that's um, what's happened now for that horse that the price has? Yeah, she, dis- she disappointed in the slur chase there last weekend, but... From when the tapes went up and I was watching her before she even jumped the first fence, I was looking going, I don't think she's ready. I don't think she looks right. Um, she doesn't look exuberant. Um, she might have a bit of condition on her. And I'm thinking maybe, of course, it's a bit of a guessing game and you have to play the guessing game, but you get the price mm. for that. And um, I think Henry might be playing a game whereas maybe she's not so ready yet. She looks like maybe she hasn't even been trained for the season yet. Like she just she just looked flat. Mm. And um I think as the season goes on and she will progress through the season and she mightn't even win many se- races through the season because Cheltenham is her track. But yeah. I think she'll I think she'll turn up in the day. I think she'll be A one and she may be massively underestimated here. And at 20 to 1 pen we're going to take put the kettle on as our first selection because that's a ridiculous price. We might want a little bit of dig in the ground and um, we've had a very dry autumn. I'm hoping the spring is going to be wet enough um, and uh, the ground will be soft enough for her. But I think she, she won the champion chase last year. I think the ground was lively enough. So I think it's I think it's a massive each way price and we'll, we'll take yeah. put the kettle on as our first selection in the okay. champion chase. Okay. <clears throat> I'm delighted to take that. Um, I love an overreaction. Um, so mm-hmm. first flow is next. I, I think first flow might not be good enough. For I think first flow may appreciate a, a more, a more flat track. Um, so we'll discount that. And then next in the bet we have Captain Guinness. Um, uh-huh. Ca- Captain Guinness is a fascinating horse. He's been very unlucky. Right. He has been very, very unlucky in in his races, and he's he's shown huge glimpses of ability. And um, if we look at it, it's quite possible Rachel may ride Captain Guinness in the Champion Chase, and that is good oh, enough wow. for me. That's that's a good sign. You know, as far as I'm concerned, she's the best. She's the best around at the minute. There's nobody is on her level as far as I'm concerned and um, you know if she's if she's on your horse you've, you've got half a chance no matter what the horse is <laughs> and if you look to Captain Guinness's form you know he was a very 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 um, promising novice hurdler he turned up in the Supreme um, which Shishkin won and he was travelling lovely and he was brought down um, with the third last I think um, no fault of his own. There was three or four fallers. They all came across, and he was brought down. Um, and of course, he then was pulled up at Tipperary. But of course, after that incident, you 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 wouldn't judge him on that. So he started off then as a novice chaser, um, and you know, without winning many, he's shown huge potential you know he won his de- he won his debut he was then beaten by Energamine on very heavy ground I'm convinced good ground is going to be- bring the best out of this horse and of course his debut this season then he he, he comfortably uh, put Andy Dufresne away at Nace and um, Andy Dufresne I think within himself and uh, the issues that um, have been happening in the Gordon Elliott stable, I think Andy Dufresne within himself is highly underestimated. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, based on that and the way, 
Captain Guinness was travelling in the Supreme, I think Cheltenham suits him. I think good ground suits him. And I think if he gets both, if he gets good ground on the day and all's well and Rachel's on board, I think that's a massive, massive prize pen. Um, Sounds like a winning combination. Oh, well, sure, we've seen it time and time again with Rachel and Henry, you know, so um, I'm more than happy to make him the second selection. Okay. More than happy. Yeah. Let's have a look at the chart then. Yeah. So there we go. So, uh, so far to the Gold Cup, well, Champion Hurdle, and now the Champion Chase selection is on the chart. I think I think we've got some really good selections there. Um, do you want to just summarise them there, and I can we can have a little update on where we are with it. I know it's very early. There's, there's not going to be much movement and anything, but uh, yeah. So with the Gold Cup, we had Envoy Allen at eight to one and Chantry House at fourteen to one. Yeah, I'm happy with those two. There's there's huge rumours that Envoy will go on the Ryanair, but. There's even a couple of whispers he'll run in the champion chase, but I don't, I don't think he's quick enough for a champion chase. Uh, I know he won the bumper, but um, are they going to put Alaho up against Envoy Allen? To the, the, the owners own both, like, same owners. Um, I just think he wants to test Envoy, and as the season progresses, Henry will make his mind up, but... Um, I think the Gold Cup's made from Chantry House will stay all day, will jump and pop, and I don't care what happens in the Gold Cup. I don't think he'll fall, and I think no. he'll be there. He'll be there at the death, and there'll be nothing finishing stronger than Chantry House. I tell you that now. Um, last week we looked at the champion hurdle, and you yeah. chose she wears it well at fifty to one. Yeah, and I'm going to say this wrong now, aren't I? I would say appetante. No, that's not how you say it, is it? Um, appetante, yeah. <laughs> really? So, so um so with um with she wears it well. I was watching a podcast during the week and the guy that was presented the podcast that thought that she wears it well was dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously not the case, but um uh she had a niggle, she had a bit of an injury, but um the, the plan is for she wears it well to go for the mares, but mm. I'm ho- I'm hoping she's going to really impress and it might change Willie's mind. And we all know Willie, Willie changes his mind, mm. let me tell you. Uh, Epitant won champion hurdle two years ago. She had uh, issues last year, finished third. And um, if she can turn up on the day, A1, I think she's a massive price. Lovely. And decor. Yeah. So. And then obviously we've got tonight's uh, choices. I've got the Castle Hunt and Captain yeah. I'm, I'm more than happy. I'm more than happy with those selections. I really am. Um, let me just find the race again there one more time. If we look down through it, we've Shishkin and Energamine. They're short enough, but they are the two to beat. There's no doubt about it. Shaq and Persuad, you give me a hundred to one, I wouldn't back it. So you can forget about him. Nuba Negra surely will find a few too good from Alaho won't run Grantine's not good enough Envoy won't run First Flow's not good enough Midnight Shadow's not good enough Asterian Falange needs to go right handed All Mankind is a lunatic that I'm very worried he's going to kill himself on a race course he just runs through fences and you cannot win a champion chase doing that although he's got some engine on him Hitman Hitman is an interesting horse. I'm going to say possibly not good enough to win a grade one, but he could be one that could make you eat your words. Unaccepted, I think, is a very good handicapper. Defi de Sol, you just wouldn't know. He's a he's a very, very extremely talented horse, but he's had a struggling year or two. Philip Hobbs is on and off with form and... I know 33 to 1 is a very big price, but you, you couldn't be taking him. Funambul Savola for Venetia ran a beautiful race and entry behind Shishkin uh, last season. But again, he's he's not going to be good enough to win a championship chase. And then you can carry on. You have Sko Royal, who is 50 to 1. Now, I backed Sko Royal in this race last year at 50 to 1. Wow. And I was sitting with my son mm. watching the race. 
And as they came over, I think it was at the third last or the second last, I said, we're going to win. I said, Shay, we have this. He's going to do it. I can see it. He's traveling as good as anything. He's absolutely. And then as they came around the bend, he was nearly brought down. He clipped. I don't know what he clipped. If you watch the race again, he, he clipped a couple of horses and he nearly came down. Um, but but he carried on and I think he finished fifth or sixth. But if that hadn't happened, <clears throat> I um I I challenge anyone to tell me he wouldn't have won that race. He was absolutely cruising. Oh. And um this is the sort of horses you want to be finding, you know, if you yeah. can. Uh, but Skull Royal now will run in this race again and he may get the good ground again, but he'll be ten, I think he might be ten or eleven. I just think time, he's a little, little horse, <laughs> tiny little horse. And I just think time might be catching up on him. El Dorado Allen's a handicapper, but very good. No book doesn't like Cheltenham. Itchy Feet's not good enough. Sir Gerhardt's a novice. Sky Pirate's a handicapper. Rouge Vif, Rouge Vif needs a flat track. And then you carry on down. And that's pretty much everything summarised. So I think we have it. I think we've 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 secured a bit of value there, Penn, anyway. That's, that's for sure. That's what we want. And, um, mm-hmm. I, I think if we look at the chart up to now, we've we've huge value there, and hopefully they can most of them can get there safe and sound yeah. on the day. So, what race shall we look at next week? Uh, we'll go for the stairs hurdle. Um, I think it's important if we're advising anti-post bets this far out that we can pick races at this point that we know the horses running are going to go for this race, you know. Yeah. And um, some of the some of the other channels are picking novice races and bumpers and stuff, and you, so you don't know who's going to turn up or what. You don't even know who some of the horses are at this point. So I think it's mm-hmm. important early on to pick races where we know the market makes sense, if you know what I mean. So yeah. we'll pick our way through. And by the time we get to these other races, th- the market will have formed and will make sense to us. So we can we can eke out the value. Sounds like a very good plan. Yeah. So brilliant. Okay. Well, thank you for another very informative and enjoyable chat. And uh, welcome, Penny. I look forward to uh, catching up with you next week. Yeah, indeed. Look forward to it. All right. Hope take care. Well. Hope your cough goes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye.